Hi, welcome back here at the CNET stage. I'm Donald Bell at CES 2013, and I am joined by Bree Pettis here, uh, co-founder and CEO of MakerBot Industries. And yesterday, you guys announced the MakerBot Replicator 2X. Am I right? Da -da -da, yes. da -da -da. <laughs> Tell me about your new 3D printer. So we unveiled this one yesterday. So this is our fourth generation of MakerBot. Mm -hmm. And to kind of break it down, the MakerBot Replicator 2 is a single extruder a 3D printer optimized to use a material called PLA, which is a renewable bioplastic that's made from corn. Now, yesterday we unveiled the Replicator 2X. For extreme? For, uh, for experimental. Ah, okay. Well, I, I like that. I'm extreme. Not, extreme. Yeah. extreme. Extreme 3D printing. You have to like drink your From the tops of mountains. Yeah, yeah. Jumping out of airplanes. Yes. Maybe um, next year that can be the but it's kind of like that, actually, because it uses a, the Replicator 2X uses a material called ABS, which is a little bit fussier material. And we made, we optimized the machine so that you can be successful with it. But it's really set up for the Doc Brown MacGyver types. Like, you know, if you've built a trebuchet from right. scratch, Replicator 2X is for you. <laughs> right. So does that, the ABS setting go up to 11 somehow for like you can really feel the, so the power? Can, yeah. So you can print out your own stone. All right, now let's back up though. I know that there are still people out there who really haven't gotten their head around 3D printing, the why of it, the, the who are, who's using your 3D printers. You've been selling these now for a good two, three years. How long has MakerBot been selling MakerBots? Yeah, this is our fourth year. Okay. We, we sh we, our, this our, and this is our fourth time at CES. The first year we were here and we were, the, we were like so far I back I in the corner. I actually visited you guys because I was like, MakerBots here. And, but you were, uh, yeah, you were in the boonies. Yeah, it was, it, we were in the thick, yeah. in, 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 yeah, way back right, there. Since then, who's really taken up the, uh, the MakerBots and kind of been your, your biggest market? Well, to kind of, well, first I should tell people what 3D printing sure, is because it's still science fiction for a lot of people. And basically, if you think about 2D printing, like you have a virtual document on your computer and you turn it into a physical document. Sure. With 3D printing, you have a virtual 3D model and you turn it into you know, a physical 3D model and it builds it up layer by layer and then you take it out and you have your thing and that you imagine. Your girlfriend is there, you can give her a name. Yep. Great. <laughs> um, and so, what's, so we've got these two new 3D printers that we launched, mm -hmm. and then we've also got some other stuff. We've got, we updated our software, so it's more feature rich, and then we launched a, a thing on Thingiverse, which is our place where, it's our library where people share downloadable digital designs. We launched an API, which allows developers to make things, and just for fun, we made an application on that API called the MakerBot Customizer. And it lets you go on there and create things. So it makes it, it makes it really simple to make things. So like there's an iPhone case, and you literally you choose what kind of iPhone you have, and you choose what kind of shapes you want to have, and how much they overlap, and how thick things are going to be. And you can make a custom geometric, patter, geometric pattern to iPhone case. It looks right. really cool. Now, and then you show can make me. Let's, let's show some of these off. Show me sure. some of the things that have been made by the MakerBot. So this is one of my, I'm a gearhead. I, I, you know, I've had like 30 cars, and only two of them were worth more than $1,000. So I've spent a lot of the time under the hood of old cars. And this is a V6 Ford engine block. And Ford sent us the model for this. And this is actually the model for a Ford V6 engine block. So just scaled down. You, you're going to have to print out a few more pieces, though, to get the whole car eventually. That's true. We need, there's actually, but it's really cool. You can see where the, where the oil goes. And then there's a separate system for the coolant. Mm -hmm. And it's all there. So in some ways, this is an education in how an engine works, just printing that out. And this is printed actually at medium resolution, which is still really nice. And then this is actually, we're making this right now. It's just starting. This is a sculpture, a Sappho sculpture. And this is printing at, printed at our highest resolution, 100 micron layer height. Yeah, and you, and can, you can definitely tell the difference in the, the feel of the re resolution on this little statuesque, uh, statuette and the, and the engine block. This has kind of like a satiny finish. Yeah, it's much smoother. This one, you can kind of feel the steps as, mm -hmm. of things. And this is smooth. And then you so got your, you also, this little statue can live in this house yes. <laughs> with uh, your miniature furniture here. So this is furniture made by um, Casey Holgren. And Casey Holgren, she's a set designer in New York. And sh her sets are on Broadway. And in the old days, she used to design sets with like cardboard and X-Acto knives and glue and, you know, spill blood everywhere in the process, <laughs> right? Well, now she's got a few MakerBots, and when she goes to design a set, she designs them all on her computer, and then makes them on her MakerBot, takes them into the director, and they talk about stuff. And, bec and because of this, she's done this for a lot of shows, she's got all this period furniture. <laughs> 
for like, you know, she's got Victorian furniture, and I'm not sure, really kind of like classic furniture right. for different places. Tupperware bins full of old Victorian miniature furniture. <laughs> so now on top of being a set designer, she's also got a side business where she sells this to dollhouse enthusiasts. Oh, so it's one of the things that when you're a MakerBot operator, you think about, okay, I'm going to make these things in the world, and if people want them, no problem, I'll just make more. <laughs> I, well, but mostly you're, you're talking about creative professionals, people are in kind of different crafty uh, professions or, or hobbies. But there is also that, that sense that what's exciting about this technology and why is that CES is that it may be this step towards this future of printing out your own gadgets or, or somehow a cooperative uh, process of, you know, the next iPhone come out, comes out and in some parallel universe it's pseudo open source and you can print out the casing for it and then you just buy the chips from Apple or something like that, right? There's, yeah. there's this idea that maybe 3D printing is going to replace our, the conventional distribution of, of gadgets. So at our core, MakerBot is an innovation company. And, w and what's cool is we're, we innovate so that you can innovate. And our core audience is, is you know, engineers, industrial designers, architects, and you know, professionals who use CAD. But then there's this whole other level of people who just want to live in the future. And so they get, they, you know, they're maybe a teacher or they, a parent and they just get one of these so that they can be ready for what happens next. And those people, they don't necessarily have to design the next Ford engine. They're free to design whatever weird thing they can imagine. And you know, traditionally, if you were going to come up with a, a, a product, you have to think about you know, selling it to 10 or 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. With a MakerBot, you just have to make it for yourself. Right. So there's all sorts of wonderful things on Thingiverse every day that's, and that, are, that are coming up. And, it's, and we're at an inflection point. No, it's never been a better time to be a creative you know, maker in the world. With a MakerBot, you can make stuff just straight out of your head. What used to take a month to send off to a model shop to be made can take you an hour. So that whole process of innovation, you can iterate much faster so you can do a lot more, you can try things out a lot more before you make your final, sure. final but thing. But I mean, it gets to this idea of, of home production, right, of, of instead of the, in the, like the printer analogy, uh, instead of, you know, having to go down and have your, your, you know, making copies on your old mimeograph machine, you can print out at home now. Yes. Uh, and in, in the same way here, you can, instead of having to go and buy an iPhone case, you can print one out at home or print out your miniature furniture. Is there, is there, does it stop it at plastics or is there a way that this is, technology is eventually going to come down to 3D printing, uh, you know, motherboards for your computer or 3D printing food, as our, our producer was mentioning today. Uh, is, there, is there another step to this that gets towards the whole gadget? What's so great is that we're at the beginning of the next industrial revolution, and we put this power in people's hands, mm -hmm. and they're going to do both wonderfully innovative and totally absurd things with it. And in many ways, absurd things are really close to innovative things, because when you make something that's just stupid, because you can, you learn a little bit uh, something different about what's possible than if you are really focused on a traditional application. So we're going to see just a massive blossoming in the coming years as more and more people get these in their hands, right. and it just becomes normal to innovate. I'm super excited about it. Bree, thank you so much hey. for joining us today. A pleasure to be here.